Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Hi, it's me, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Today we have an art journal tutorial, step-by-step -step process video, telling you all the inside tips and tricks. If you want to support my channel, you can sh shop through my Amazon influencer links, or you can click on the PayPal link. Both of these are in the description box below. Want to support my channel another way? Hit the subscribe button. Share this video with your creative friends. So I'm in my Canson Mixed Media 7x10 journal. And, you know, I've been really enjoying getting back and just playing in my journal. It's very freeing and um, just enjoying that. So I am going to be using some of this tissue paper that I created in a Build Your Stash video. And, you know, I think I'm just going to put that right on here. I like this one. I've been thinking I'm going to go in, you know, I found this in my stash, like the green, lime green. So I think I'm going to go into the green zip zone, greens and yellows, which is really not my, comp not my area where I typically go. But you know what? I'm going to go and I like the, the branches kind of strange doing this maybe with you know it being um, <laughs> uh, winter and all but uh, got you know just some packaging uh, do, 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 do. So I'm gonna put that on and I'm just gonna put that on with some matte gel And I'm just going to thin this down just a smidge. So if we look at the color wheel, we are in he, this zone. So, you know, I'm thinking focal points. You either will continue and keep it in Atlas, which will be, you know, colors that are in here, kind of tone on tone, which is what I did in the last one. Or we might end up doing some coral, um, corals and reds purple that was, would really pop. So that's kind of in the back of my head. I don't have an idea for um, what I want to do for that right now. I, I have no idea what, what focal image I'm going to do. I've taped off this. That just keeps the gunk and the, the glue and the mediums and colors out of the coils. It just keeps it nice. I'm hoping that this one, this page kind of takes it over much like the other one did. It just kind of, you know, the creativity just kicks in and, and you know, you go places that you don't even plan. So I'm going to kind of get close to the edge, but you know what, if I go over, I don't care. And I'm, I'm okay with the texture that's there. You can see the crinkles, that's just going to add to it. And I'm just putting that on, just making sure we've got good adherence. And I'm okay with, uh, you know, this is, uh, the tape is going to be lifted off, so I'm just kind of rubbing this off here, just to have make it easier for, for removal of the tape later. And I'm okay with it being um, kind of scrappy. So this is one way that you can use it. I could also have done just several parts of it. I can peel this over and put another layer if I wanted to. 
um, but it kind of gives some pattern, some idea, some, it looks light and eerie to me, which kind of goes with the green coloring that I've got going on. Green is not my usual wheelhouse, so I'm just going to dry this. So I'm just kind of just, the wetness of this is just peeling right off. This can go back into my stash for another project, and we're just going to dry. Not exactly sure where I want to go. color on here and see see what's happened see where I go with this The steps of you know the art journal page you know whether you collage and then stamp and then stencil you can mix those up in any order those are kind of the basic components and most of my projects will include some of you know one of all of those but it's not necessarily you know imperative sometimes I don't and the order, you know, you'll get a different effect if you mix them up. I'm thinking that would be a good video to do is just use the five components, the collage, stamping, stenciling, um, color, focal image, and just do those in different orders and see you know, where you end up going. Okay. You can, of course, put this on with a brush if that's your preference. Um, kind of up to you. I'm going to give this a dry. And then we'll be back. So you may have noticed that I've kept this video in real time and I like to do that every once in a while to show exactly how long it takes, the, especially with stenciling. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they put too much paint or they try to go too fast. It is a slow process. You put a little bit of paint on, on the makeup sponge, you dab it off and you apply it and you can build up color over time. But if you try to rush it, it doesn't work. Now this is one of my favorite stencils. It is called Crazy Waves and it's a crafter's workshop stencil. But I love it because it has four separate patterns on it. So you get a lot for your money. So a stencil like this or this one are really invaluable because you can get a lot of usability out of it. So I am stenciling with the darker colors and with the lighter colors all over this background. 
And as I do this, you might be thinking, you know, I don't really see a whole lot of that tissue paper back there. What that gives us, and it's still there, and if you do a close-up, but it's, it's further back. So you want to develop these really interesting layers where different components are further back, some are closer. And I'm just trying to get some of this different patterning on here, but I'm keeping this very one tone. I could introduce, and I do in a little bit, I do start adding some white because I want this to be light and airy. But as you can see, there's a considerable amount of time that I'm just adding and stenciling. So I put the steps here, and this follows again the steps. I collaged, I added color, I stenciled, which is what you see me doing. And I will continue through the rest of those components of a mixed media art journal page. So I add a little bit, then I peek and I see, do I like it, do I not like it? And I'm really liking the texture of this. I'm thinking this would be really nice to do um, some negative painting and uh, like of a turtle. I like that the, the circles there and the, some of that patterning I think would look amazing on a turtle. So as I do these pages in my art journal, it gives me ideas for either other art journal pages or for canvases. And that's why I art journal, because it's a time that I'm not overthinking. I'm just doing, and little bits like, oh, this background, I'm gonna do it again. I have other applications and other things that I can do with it. This is another stencil that I love. Now it's called Onion Blossoms, but rarely do I actually use it as is. But I use just kind of the one area of it and that's a trick you can use to maximize the use of your stencils too. Look at different parts of it. Stencil them as they are, especially if they're like here, this is a focal point of onion blossoms, but it's so much more, flower, flower patterns. Um, there could be parts of it that you could use to add interesting pattern to your background. So here I'm using white and getting a little too much on the makeup sponge. Guilty. I'm trying to push it and go faster. I just want to add white here because I, I don't want, I want to keep this light and airy. For some reason, that's what inspired me. So adding a layer of white in some ways will, will do that. But all you see are the circles. Of this you and maybe some of the lines you don't you're not going to read this as this is an onion blossom and stencil things halfway off the page as well When I have to do a voiceover now, because when I start creating, I often talk. And then once I get into it and I just the creative process draws me in, I find there's just like dead silence. And all you hear is the sound of me banging up and down with the makeup sponge. So my page is curling, so I'm just kind of reversing that. And I decide that I'm going to use some light and fluffy modeling paste and add a little more texture. But again, I'm using stencils in two ways on this. I stencil to give some pattern, and I'm stenciling to add texture here. And I chose to use the same stencil that I have put some of the stenciling for pattern in. And I kind of have idea that I'm going to put the focal point on the other side. So I want, I want some of this texture in here. I'm a very, you know, 90% of my art has texture and gold in it. 
This one doesn't have gold, but it will have texture. And again, I could have done this before I added color or after. And you get slightly different effects every time you change it up. So I'm just cleaning off the edges. And I just take the palette knife and I scrape some of it where that it got where I didn't want it to be. I'm just adding that little bit of texture. Usually I add more, but on a small page like this, it's very, you know, it's limiting. You have to edit how much you put. So now I'm going to do some stamping. stamping. And this is one of the stamps that I talked about in the Build Your Stash video as one that I get my maximum use out of. It actually is twice that size. I cut it in half and, and I'll use it in my classes. And I'm just stamping with acrylic paint and these stamps. And that's just to add a slightly different look. When you stencil, you get a certain look and it gives a certain effect. When you stamp, you get something different. They kind of do the same thing, but they add things differently. And always with your stamps, take the time to clean them and wipe them off. Get that acrylic paint off because it will, over time, build up and may wreck your investment in, in those stamps. So what do you think of this background so far? Now I'm grabbing the focal point and as I showed you at the beginning with the color wheel, this echinacea flower is would be across the color wheel from the greens and yellows. So I'm using complementary color to for my focal point and that's why it pops off this page so much. I have a whole bunch of magazine pictures cut up and they're just in file folders and sometimes when I'm not sure what focal point I'm in or I just want to play, I just kind of flip through them. So I want to color this texture paste and I've had these magicals that have been sitting on my desk and they were in, in a container that I grabbed recently and they've sat here and I've been thinking about incorporating it into the last three videos but I never do and I was thinking that this one this green one was going to look good here but it ended up being more teal than the lime green so I really wasn't liking it now these magicals are the starburst ones and they have that shimmer and that's what I really wanted and I it, even though you're going to see me remove a lot of this the magical color you do still get some of that shimmer but it, the green is just not the right green for what I have there right now I'm just kind of brushing it, seeing if I can salvage this. But as with most things, I mean, worst case scenario, a coat of gesso and up, then up, apply more paint. There's really nothing that you can do that can't be fixed. You know, sometimes you think, as I did here, this is going to be, this is going to work good here, and you're wrong. Not a biggie. So I've kind of taken that back, and I like how the white is bringing out the texture and the pattern of the texture paste and the stencil. So here you see me, I'm kind of thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So now I've, I've turned the page and I do this quite often. I might think I'm going to go top to bottom and then I turn it and end up doing it landscape. 
So here I'm playing with the focal image and I end up grabbing a hummingbird picture that has the same kind of pink fuchsia color around its neck. And then I had some a sentiment in my stash of fonts and sentiments, lift your spirit. And I thought, okay, that all kind of goes together. And I'm just playing with the final placement of this. Still fussing with the, the color on the texture paste. So when I say focal image, I mean actual images like the echinacea and the, and the bird. And I also mean phrases, the sentiment that you want. Sometimes that goes together. Sometimes the words themselves are the focal image. And usually when I make them the focal image, like the last video, it's they're much larger in size. and quite often a contrasting color, usually black, that really stands out. I told you I wasn't happy with it. So, you know, if you're doing a page and you think to yourself, oh my, I can't, this is not working, you know, why can't I create? This is part of the process. You're solving problems as you go. So I'm just adding some of the... Hooker's Green, which I love that color on it, adding some, getting it in the nooks and the crannies, which is what I want, and then taking it off of the higher points of the texture paste, because I love that effect. So I'm using gel medium to glue down the magazine pictures, and I find that really works well with magazine pictures. I much prefer the gel medium over the Mod Podge. And both, when I use them, are matte finish because I don't want that shine. The matte medium that I'm using is, or the gel medium, it, um, matte finish, it's Liquitex brand. It's the one I've, I've only tried, other, other than this, I've tried Golden. I prefer this one. But that's a personal choice. I just make sure I shop and get it 50% off. But it's a staple in my studio. So there we have... There's the focal point over there and the background on the other side. And I've used a complementary color scheme in picking that. And I will put a link to a one of my mixed media technique tag videos where I talk about the ABCs of matching a focal point to a background. How do you decide some of the considerations that I do when I'm deciding what how to put match those two things? so that you get a pleasing picture, pleasing end product. But that was only something, you know, after I did a couple years of art journaling and mixed media, I stopped and said, okay, why do I like this one? Why does this work? You know, I went back and I analyzed my pictures. And I highly recommend that you do that too. On the backs of one of my very first art journals, I would write, you know, kind of put the process, but more importantly, I would write what I liked and what I didn't like. And that was really helpful in helping me grow as an artist. So I might say, you know, I really like the background or I like this stencil or how this showed off with this because you're not going to remember everybody everything I love this green background and like I said at the beginning doing the green tone is not my usual so you know every once in a while step out try color combos that you don't normally use
So the kind of the step six to all our journal pages is the finishing. How do you take it from, oh, it's an okay page, to wow? Some of those little things. And, and quite often in my Facebook group and other Facebook groups I'm in, people comment, you know, I, I th I'm done and I'm happy, but, you know, something's missing. And quite often what's missing there is the finishing techniques. And I'll put a link to another mixed media technique tag video that I talk about finishing how you finish the page. Those little things that just, just add that little bit of zip to your page. And what I should have done here is take a picture of it. So what you see me doing is I'm taking my Stabilo All Pencil and just sketching around the focal point and the words. And then you're going to see me activate this with water on a brush. And I'm just going to, I kind of tease it out and pull it away. What I don't want is this to look like I've just taken a black marker and outlined it. I've seen people doing that with a black marker and I like what they do. It's just not what I like to do. So you try both ways and see what you like. So here I'm just kind of teasing it out and I just kind of want to make a little bit of shadow underneath to separate the focal point and push the focal point up and the background back. Now you've seen me doing this quite a bit with the acrylic float technique, but I realize that that is a technique that takes time to practice and many people have said, oh, I just, I can't do it. So I want to make sure you know that there are other ways to get a similar effect. And the Stabilo Owl pencil is one of those. I've also used woodless charcoal pencils for that purpose. You can use your watercolor pencils. If you have everything coated with gel medium, you can use um, the big brush markers and then smudge them. You can use ink tense blocks. Ink tense blocks, the big brush markers, and the acrylic float technique, those will all end up with being permanent. So if you varnish it afterwards, if that's something you're going to do, or you're going to add wet medium afterwards, they will not reactivate. If you use the Stabilo L pencil, the charcoal, the watercolor pencils, um, gelatos, anything that's water activated, it is going to be activated and it may end up wrecking your page. Most of the times, if I'm doing it in my art journal, I'm not varnishing it. So using this to be low all pencil at this stage, where this is pretty much the end, would have been fine. If I'm doing it on a canvas, which I know I'm going to varnish, I'm going to choose something that's going to be permanent. So regardless of what you see me doing, I'm always going to tell you, you can do it other ways. And I need to, and I want to show you that those other ways. I think I was inspired to use the hummingbird he, in this picture. I mean, I love hummingbirds and I love echinaceas. And of course it's winter on Vancouver Island and, and, there's no flowers. Well, there are flowers blooming, unfortunately, or fortunately for me, but we have hummingbirds year round and we've got two feeders and they entertain me on a regular basis. And I keep going back with the Stabilo Oil Pencil till I get the effect that I like. It's... Initially, when you're starting, you kind of have to kind of let it go. It's going to, you're, I know I remember feeling, oh, it's too messy. It's too sloppy. It's not precise enough. It's not, and then I just had to let go of that.
If you are enjoying my videos, if you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video with your creative friends. All of those actions that you can take help the people in YouTube realize that this is a good video and they recommend it on other channels. Based on the response it gets from viewers, that's how they make decisions. So it really helps me out and supports me and my channel. I'd just like to thank all those people that leave comments. There are, there are some subscribers you're, you're commenting on a regular basis. And I look forward to reading your comments and, you know, connecting with you. Because for me, teaching the art and passing on what I know, you know, kind of is a labor of love. It's all about developing those creationships. I'm so happy that the world now there's a good use for YouTube and Facebook in helping people connect over a shared love and that and that's what art mixed media art journaling is you know once upon a time you know every time you when you do crafts it's just you at your kitchen table and with social media it's just allowed us to develop creationships with people across the world. And I find that just totally amazing and wonderful. So I think this video in total took about 36 minutes. And there was a little bit of the off time where I've dried and that wasn't captured on the camera. So it was under an hour to doing a 7x10 art journal page. Having the pictures cut out in my stash, having the sentiments cut out in my stash, having the tissue paper done, that saved creating time. And that's why I've developed the Build Your Stash video series that I'm continuing to add to because when you build your stash you're shortening your creating time you know at that time and it's more doable because you're busy you may not have an hour to do something or two hours or do you or you don't want to grab everything out all the time so if you haven't checked out that series, please do. There's oodles of helpful tips and tricks. They, they are longer videos, usually done in real time. I am not voiceovered. It's just a lot of me talking and giving a lot of tips. But I think they're valuable, uh, whether you're a beginner or whether even if you're not. We take in different amounts of information over different times. And sometimes it's like we need to be reminded, even though we've been doing it for a while. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Or, oh, I never thought of that. So the links to the stencils that I used um, and any specialized project product, product, sorry, um, are in the description box alone. You can click through my Amazon link and shop through that link. You can buy the item that I've linked to or any item, whether it's craft related or not. And, you know, I will get a small percentage of that. It won't cost you more, but any shopping you do through my link does support me and my channel. All the monies that come from that I put back directly into my art, buying new products that I can use and demonstrate and learn on for you and pass, on, pass the information on to you. So one thing I'm doing, I'm taking this Stabilo All Pencil here and I'm edging the page. This is a necessity. And if I don't know what I'm going to do next, you'll often see me edging at an earlier stage in the process. But it just frames the page. I 
99% of the time, whether it's an art journal page or a canvas, I will be doing that. I do that step. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I believe this was tissue paper number eight. I asked people to vote on which one they like best. Hopefully I'll be using some more of those tissue papers because I like to show what can be done with some of the build your stash items. I hope this video has lifted your spirit and gotten you out of the winter doldrums. Bye for now. Here's some close-ups.